And in this video, I'm going over my leader list that I've compiled over the last couple of years. Keep in mind that not all of this is up to date. I, some of this I've worked on six months, tw up to a year ago is when I put in some of this information. Just use it as a guide, as a starting point, but just know that some of this might be outdated as we go through it. Okay, but as we start here at the top, you'll see the left-handed column over here in row A or column A. You'll see lender brokerage bank. I took out the banks because this is unsecured financing that we're looking at. So if you click on here, you can, you can go through and see, you can type in a certain lender that you're looking for if you want to, and you can do that with all of this top row. I think you should be able to, and if you don't, just let me know in the comments, but here type of lending institution, you see a funder or a broker or a funder and a broker, and then unverified. I wasn't sure if they're a funder or a broker. Funder just means that they're the, when they're actually the lending institution, they're the ones lending the money. A broker is someone that manages the relationship between the small business owner and the lending institution. They're, they get paid a commission from the lender. Sometimes they charge a fee to the small business as well. Um, so if you want to work directly with a funder, you can go to their website and fill out your information there. So you don't have to pay a, a commission to a broker. Or if you want someone to do the work for you, obviously you can work with a broker or myself. This is why I give this information out. I don't think you need in 2024. I don't. I think a lot of times you don't need to use a broker, at least at first. You can do the research yourself and find out what lenders might be a good fit for you. And then uh, a lot of times they're giving out, I'll notice eventually, but they'll, they work with big, we call them super processors, or I'm sorry, super brokers, like a Lindio or a Lending Tree. Those type of companies where you type in your information and they have relationships with 50 to 75 different lenders. And then they find uh, a few different lenders that are a good match for you. And you can get funded. They'll give you a couple offers instantaneously and then uh, give you an offer right away. And then you can take the deal and get funded in less than 24 hours. Whereas a lot of brokers are still, they have manual labor. It's not all automated. So you, they take your information, they give it to their processor. Their processor scans the information and then they find offers. But a lot of times... It gets backed up because if you have 20, 50, 100 different applications coming in every single day for the same company, and there's only a handful of processors. Well, sometimes they're on break or they have too many files and it could take a couple hours, if not a full day for them to go through, um, go through your particular file. So there are upsides and downsides to it. Also, when you work with like a Lindio or a Lenny tree, you run the risk of your information getting sold. A lot of times, if it doesn't match their lender's criteria, they take your information, they sell it to other brokers or lenders, and your data gets sold and they find other lenders that, that would be more of a better fit for your profile. So just keep that in mind. I see that a lot. So I don't want that to happen to you guys where you'll just get bombarded with texts and calls all day. So make sure you, <clears throat> make sure you be careful about who, you know, who you're filling out your information for. Same thing. I mean, it happens when you work with brokers too, because if they shop your file out to, you know, if they take your file and they see that you might be a good match with 10 to 20 lenders. You just don't know some of those lenders. That's how they make money too, is they take your files. They don't like your file. They have your information out and they sell it. So again, I try to keep you all, I try to show you which lenders are the best. Again, I always like starting out with smart biz. They don't offer any merchant cash advance but they do lines of credit, term loans, and SBA loans. So if you have a 650 plus credit score, I always think that's the best place to start. Unless you need funds in 24 hours or less, then you need to find one of these merchant cash means companies. But let me just break this down real quick. That way you all can look through the list. And if you all have any questions, just let me know and I'll, I'll get back to you guys. But again, top left here, you'll see all the different lenders. Funders, brokers, second line, third line, max loan amount. It's self-explanatory starting rate. You'll see here, like if you look at a core business funding that I'm highlighting, a 1.20 factor rate, that just means it's 20% interest rate. So if you have a, a hundred, if you have a hundred thousand dollar loan, it's going to be the payback's going to be 120, 120,000. Okay. Origination fees, all of these are going to have origination fees. Some go all the way up to 10%, but it's going to be at least a couple of points. I just, I don't, you don't always get that information. Term length, how long the loan is going to be paid out for payment frequency. It's going to be daily, weekly, or monthly. 
annual revenue required. So here at the top one, one funder, they require $180,000 a year in annual sales. So that's $15,000 a month is what they want to see when they look at your bank statements. Minimum credit score, that's pretty self-explanatory. Minimum time in business. Most of these are going to be six months to a year, but there are a lot of lenders out there that will take, if only if you have three to four months, they'll give you an offer. Depending on your full profile of your business and your personal credit info, delivery of funds, most of these are going to be 24 hours or less. Excluding these states, some lenders don't like to do business in certain states because of laws and regulations. Excluding these industries, so some lenders don't like certain industries. Okay, simple enough. Minimum deposits. Uh, lenders like to see so many uh, sales coming into your bank account every single month. Uh, but a lot of times they don't require, you know, a ton. But you can see here, a few of these require at least three. Um, but I think most like to see at least eight to 10 come in. Max positions, if you see that. If you see three, that means that uh, they'll allow you to have two other loans with other online lenders outstanding that you're paying on. So they'll do a third, what's called a third position. But the more positions that you have, the more aggressive the terms and the payments and the interest rates are going to be, okay? Days with negative daily balance, that just means how many days out of the month they'll allow you to have a negative balance on your bank account. Bankruptcy friendly, most of these are going to be okay with bankruptcies as long as they're at least a couple of years out. And uh, you didn't pay, you, you didn't default on another online lender's loan. Tax lien friendly. I might take this one off. I don't think I have any information on that one. Previous or current defaults. If you're a default, sometimes there, there's lenders out there that will still lend you money if you've defaulted on, if you're currently defaulted on another loan and you haven't paid it off yet. Paid off the balance of what you owe. Canada lenders, Puerto Rican lenders. And then here it says if you if they do SBA loans, term loans, line to credit equipment, financing, MCA, most of these are going to be MCA lenders. Reverse lender, I'll take that off. You do not want to take out a reverse. Please don't take out a reverse, whatever you do. That means if you have a couple of positions and you have a lot of debt and you have cash flow issues, reverse lenders will come in and they'll make the payments. They'll make they'll give you enough money every single week just to make the payments on all your other merchant cash advance loans. But really, you're just paying interest on interest and you're just kicking the can down the road. So I just, I always say don't do it unless you like 100% have to do it just to stay in business. Crowdfunding, I don't think I, I'll take that off too. This is just a merchant cash advance lender list and, and line of credits, line of credit lenders. You're established. And then I have Trustpilot, BBB, Google Reviews. Again, this is all going to be at least six months old. It's older than that now. But it just shows you if they're, if they have reviews. On uh, Trustpilot, BBB, Google, Facebook, Forbes, Bankrate is a good online forum. Nerd Wallet, Merchant Maverick is specific to online loans as well. And this shows you that the uh, headquarters there too. So all this information is for you guys to use. Please let me know if you have any questions. I'll, I'd like to help you out in any way possible. Or if you want to just ask me, hey, I, this is the situation that I have going on with my business. These are my financing needs. Can you point me in the right direction? I'm happy to do that for you guys and obviously answer you all. And this is what I'm here for. So if you all just please point anything out, if anything's wrong, if I need to change anything, and I'll make sure to do that. If not, hope this helps and let me know if I can help out anyway. Thanks.